Okay. If you remember from the previous videos, we talked about bipolar junction transistor. So we talked about the normal transistor, the, the one that looks, if it's an NPN, it looks like this. Those are bipolar junction transistor. And again, um, this type of transistor, it's, it's called bipolar because it uses two types of charges. It uses free electron and holes. Now the one we're going to be looking at today, it's FET, which stands for Field Effect Transistor. And we call that FET. This is actually, it's not a bipolar, it's a unipolar transistor because it only depends on one type of charge, either free electrons or free holes. Now, these transistors, the BJ, BJT, are most common in linear applications. And they are actually the preferred devices in linear application. But there are a few cases in linear applications where the FET is actually better or better suited. Where? In any place where it requires high input impedance. If you want the equivalent value of the input, Z equivalent, to be large, this is a better choice. And also the FET is preferred for fast switching, most switching application. Why? Because you only have one charge there and they can actually move switch much faster than the BJT. Well, there are two kinds of FETs. One is called JFET, Junction Field Effect Transistor. So this is Junction Field Effect. And the other one is called the MOSFET. And the MOSFET stands for metal oxide semiconductor. So this is metal oxide semiconductor. FET. Now, few things about the FETs. FETs are actually are more temperature stable. So any place that requires change of temperature, you're going from one end to another on temperature, you want to use an FET instead of bipolar junction transistor. Those are more stable to change in temperature. Also, the FETs are smaller in sizes, much smaller. And that makes them more attractive in ICs, where the size of each component is critical. So that's really where these are used. Now let's talk about what they look like. The inside, I didn't show you the symbol for them. This is the BJT. I didn't show you what the FET yet, but if we take, if we take an N-type semiconductor, we take a piece, a plate here, and it's charge negative. This is negative. And you have two pieces on the end. It really doesn't matter which piece is. This is an N-type semiconductor. Now, if we attach a voltage source to this, and the way I'm going to attach my voltage source here, I'm going to put the plus on the top, the minus on the bottom. This is the plus minus. Once we did that, then the lower end is called, this end here is called the source. And the upper end is called the drain. And this voltage source, whatever you want to call it, let's call it VDD. What that source, the VDD source forces 
electron to flow from the source. The electron is going to go from the source to the drain. So this source is going to allow the electron to travel from the source to the drain. Now, if you want, this is not uh, uh, JFET. If you actually want to produce a JFET, we can take that circuit now. There we go. That N type, negative type here. There's the two pieces here. And now let's infuse into that. And I say let's, when I'm talking about the manufacturer, we'll diffuse two areas of P type. They come in and they put a positive charge here and a positive charge here. If we diffuse two areas of P-type semiconductor material right into that N-type semiconductor. Now, these P actually pieces here, the two pieces are connected internally and if you take and you attach a lead to that, that becomes your gate. So this is the source, this is the drain. Now this circuit here is a JFET. Now let's talk about how that circuit is normally biased. Now again, I don't have a space there, I'll redraw that on a smaller scale. This is P, P, this is P, drain, source, gate and normally what we do we attach a voltage source here between the gate the source and that voltage source here is usually minus plus minus plus so the minus is attached to the gate the plus is attached to the source and if we take the VDD here, the one we had before, plus, minus, plus, minus, we'll call that VDD, and we'll call this, I don't know, VGG. The one thing I want you to notice that the gate here, it's negatively charged with respect to the source. Meaning what? The voltage here is less than the voltage here. The voltage here is larger than the voltage here. Now, in case you're wondering why they call this the field effect transistor, the term field effect is related to the depletion layer that's right here around each P region. Now, these depletion layers, so right around this, if I was to draw a picture here, that's the depletion layer around this one. Different color here, I want you to see it. Hopefully you can see it on the screen. These depletion layers exist because free electrons diffuse from the N region to the P region. They come from, this is the N type, this is the positive type. Free electron will diffuse into the P region. The recombination of free electrons and holes create a depletion layer as you can see right there. So that's the section that you see depletion layer. So again, remember that this voltage is always reverse bias. The gate source is actually larger than this, and this is forward bias. Now, because this is reversed here, that means the current through the gate, the current going through the gate, I sub G, is approximately zero.
What does that mean if I sub G is approximately zero? That's really saying that the JFET has an almost infinite input resistance. So the value here is infinite. Remember from Ohm's law, Z equals what? V divided by I. Well, V here, which is negative VGG, and I is zero, you have an input infinite Z value looking that way. Now, typically, in the, like this is in theory, typically, actually, this value, the impedance or the resistance of a JFET is somewhere about 100 or a couple of hundred mega ohms. So it's a large value. It's not a small value. And that's actually what gives the JFET the big advantage over bipolar junction. So that's why we use them in high input impedance circuits. Now, another thing here, this voltage controls the drain current, the current going from the source to the drain. This is the drain here. The voltage that we put here controls that current going up there into the drain. So if you want to draw the current source to the drain, how? How does that voltage control the current? So let me redraw the circuit again. Well, I could leave the same circuit here the way it is, actually, instead of redrawing it. I was about to redraw. Well, I'll redraw that. So the gate voltage, that's what you have to remember, controls drain current. Now, how does it do it? Well, if you go back to that circuit here, there's P, there's P, there's N, minus plus, minus plus, and there is here, plus, minus, plus, minus. Now, electron flowing from the source, we said from the source, to the drain. So the electron going to flow this way. They pass through this channel, this area right here, between the depletion layers. When the gate voltage becomes, this is VGG, that's the gate voltage. When the gate voltage becomes more negative, larger value, but negative value, this actually area expands, gets bigger, till eventually touches that one and when it touches, no current gonna go through it. So as the voltage increases here, this area increases, which means there's less current going through it. And again, sometimes we call the JFET a voltage control device. It's controlled by the voltage right here. Now, if VGS or VGG, not VGS or G, whatever you wanna call it, G, if, VGG is equal to zero, you have maximum drain current flowing. Flows through the JFET. And if VGG here is negatively large, negative enough, we'll talk about how much negative, the depletion layer will become really large, which means the current will be zero. So the current through that I sub D will be approximately zero. Now, what else we can tell you about this? A couple more things, and I'm done with this video. 
Now, the way we draw this, we're not going to draw them like this every single time. So an FET, when we draw a picture of an FET, we'll draw a picture that looks like this. And we have, this is the gate, this is the drain, and this is the source. And in some instances, these actually draw a little bit different. They're drawn like this, where the gate is coming at that end. Drain and source. Now, this type of a circuit that you see here is actually called offset gate symbol. And it's really similar to this at low frequency. Even at low frequency, you can interchange the drain and the source. You can flip-flop them, and you will notice the difference. But at high frequency, if you flip-flop the drain and the source, you will notice the difference because manufacturer put a capacitor between here and there, which is different value than between here and here. As we said, this is the alternative symbol for the JFET. This symbol is called offset gate. It's preferred by many engineers and technicians. They use that one. The offset gate point of the source, notice where it's going right there. Now, if your circuit is actually instead of N type with P type material, if we reverse that, you can have a P type with N area. So that one actually will look like this. You have a P type and this is N and this is N, the same story. You have gate drain and source. But in this case, that circuit actually picture wise, the way we draw them in our book will look like this. and the current will be coming out of it, out of the gate, instead of going into the gate, that's the drain. This is the source, and this is the gate. One thing to remember that all these voltages are backward or reverse. The voltage and current are reverse. That means what? This voltage here will be plus, minus, plus, minus and this voltage here will be minus plus minus plus when you draw that. And that's really all introduction to what a JFET is. And the next video we're going to talk about how the current uh, looks like when you draw actually the drain curves for the current. Then we'll look at the application of that. So I'll stop here and I'll see you in the next video.